AEW Wrestle Dream was this past week. Was it the best pay-per-view of the year? We will review it this time on Falls Count Anywhere. All right, folks, welcome back to a new episode of Falls Count Anywhere. Our dreams came true this past weekend. AEW Wrestle Dream, fantastic pay-per-view this past Saturday. Um, Don't bury the lead. Our dreams came true when Adam Copeland made his premiere on AEW. He is all elite. Okay, there, I got it out of the way. Okay. I feel better now. Good. So, spoilers now. We can. We don't have to talk this about anything, This is a show right? about spoilers. We're spoiling <laughs> things here. That's what this is for. Um, but, yeah, this is an awesome show. I definitely, I mean, I'm going to be saying this all throughout the episode, but this is probably my favorite pay-per-view of the year for AEW. I think this was their best this year. It was kind of long. Of course it was. All AEW shows are long. They try and give you your money's worth. Do you think they're going to get shorter when they go to HBO or Max next year? I think they're going to... I would. Ho- I mean, I said bit? this before. Yeah, I think if they're going to be moving to 12, right, 12 pay-per-views a year, then they need to cut them down, not get everybody on one show, and yep. start spreading them out a bit more, like WWE's been doing a lot lately, having the shorter shows with less people. Um well, I, I missed the zero hour, so why don't you give me the lowdown on the zero hour? Okay. I'm well, looking at the lineup, and the Claudio and Luchasaurus matches are catching my eye. Which which was the best match of the, oof, the pre? Definitely Claudio versus Josh Barnett. Really? That was a wrestling clinic. And it was only like 10 minutes long. It was a short match, but it was, <laughs> it was a fantastic match. Excellent. And especially, I mean, for a pre-show match, it was fantastic. I don't know why they would put that on the pre-show. I mean, that's a main event or Yeah, no else. build. No, it was announced day of or night before or something like that. Um, but the night started out. So this whole pay-per-view was uh, was a tribute, was in honor of Antonio Noki, the uh, founder and Late Japanese great. legend of uh, New Japan. Um, his grandsons were there. They did a whole presentation beforehand uh, with Tony Khan, Rocky Romero presenting the flowers to the grandsons which is a japanese custom they do that in a lot of a lot of wrestling and sports and everything um so yeah all night long you're seeing tributes to him and pretty much every match somebody was doing some sort of uh abdominal stretch which is one of the moves he was known for the octopus stretch um so yeah really nice tribute to Mm -hmm. him and like i said fantastic show started out on the pre-show on the zero hour with an eight-man tag, eight-man mixed tag, um, Shane Taylor, Lee Moriarty, Mercedes Martinez, and Diamante lost to Keith Lee, Billy Starks, Athena, and Japanese wrestling legend Kojima. Eight-person mixed tag team match went five minutes and 45 seconds. Yeah. This was lightning fast. Yeah. The intros took longer than that. All the matches on the Zero Hour were short matches. They had got four of them Still on there. Still five minutes for eight people in the ring? Yep. But it was a good match. Again, all the matches were very good. You get in, you get out. Yeah. It was really cool to see Keith Lee and Shane Taylor in the, in the ring together because they're a former tag team. Yep. They came up together. Uh, a lot of history in Ring of Honor, so that was cool. Um, next one, like I said, Claudio versus Barnett. Uh, pfft. This is what wrestling should be. It was steal the show. It was great. Didn't steal the show. You can't Def- steal the show. <laughs> definitely stole zero hour though, for sure. Next one you mentioned, Luchasaurus versus Nick Wayne. Um, Borderline squash. Yeah, yeah. Nick got a little, got a little, got a little bit in there, but um, yeah, it was just, it was a squash. It was just to close out that storyline going on, and then come to find out at the end of the match, see what happened with them later on, right. but. And then the last one on the Zero Hour, the Acclaimed and Daddy Ass versus TMDK, the Mighty Don't Kneel. Another really good match. Typical Acclaimed match, but it was good. Uh, yeah, they can hold their own. Yep. That's a, that's a stellar pre-show. I yeah. don't know. How to, that's the, probably the best pre-show in the history of professional wrestling. <laughs> so we didn't have any picks for those, sh- for those matches. Nope. Those were all announced yep. after the fact. But And we got into the main show, 10 matches. We had picks for all of them. First one starting out with the world champ, MJF, defending the Ring of Honor tag titles in a handicap match against the Righteous. Which we both predicted we thought he would. We didn't quite know how he would end up doing it. It was interesting to note the dynamic of him getting away with cheating 
because he's in a handicap match. Right. So, like, made it okay, the fact that he went over, you know, using his feet up against the ropes. But they did a good job making it look like an actual fight. I, I give uh, I give the Righteous a lot of credit here because yeah. making selling it in a way that makes it look like it's an actual, like, actual realistic fight when, obviously, in real life, they're just going to crush him. Um, it worked out. I mean, I... It, it was a good opener. I'm glad they didn't put it at the end. It definitely didn't belong at the yeah, end. Yeah, absolutely. But it was a good match. <clears throat> All right, what was the next on the lineup? I don't have the full lineup. Eddie Kingston and Shibata. Eddie Kingston, yep, defending both of his belts. Now, the moment for me in this match that just uh, my eyebrows went up was when Kingston put him in a bow and arrow, mm-hmm. rolled him over, and bent him in half. I was like, that's cool. Because I've been on a, I don't know. I, you I've mentioned a, it. Yeah, I've been on like a Kingston... Down. You know, like what the heck? You know, this this is not what I was led to believe. This match, yeah, it, it pulled me out of my my nosedive with him. Good. Uh, it was a solid match. They shook hands at the end. Yep. Um, it was good. It belongs in the middle of the card. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Was, was we both picked Kingston to win on that one. Yep. We were both right. Uh, what was next? We had Chris Statlander, the only women's match of the night. Chris mm. Statlander went over Julia Hart. Brody King literally, like, carries her lifeless corpse back into the back at the end of this match. Yep. But uh, Julia Hart can wrestle. Yeah. She, I said it last week, she is probably the one of, if not the most popular woman in, in the company right now because she's been doing some really good work. She can freaking wrestle. Everyone sings her song when she's coming out. Yeah. Chris Statlander's doing something funny. She's working a face angle right now, but she's mm-hmm. using a lot of swear words, calling her a bitch and stuff, um, which is kind of weird. I know you're a big Chris Statlander fan, yep. but you kind of lulled you know there for a minute. I like the alien gimmick better than the one she's doing now, because <clears throat> the, ne- the one she has now is just kind of ge- generic badass. But... They're kind of selling her in the same way, and this this isn't a fair comparison, but I think, it's, I think it makes sense. They're kind of selling that whole like strength, power... Right. Raquel Rodriguez angle to it. Um, it's, it's okay. It's Yeah, it's kind of generic. It's kind of generic, exactly. Yeah. yeah, her alien thing, I wasn't crazy about the alien thing, but I like it more than I like just, oh, she's really strong right. kind of a thing. Yep. Um, up next was... Oh, and we both picked Stat to win on that yeah, one. Yeah, I think we knew she'd defend. Mm-hmm. Uh, Young Bucks defeat Lucha Brothers, uh, The Guns, and Orange Cassidy in a hook by pinfall. Um, we both picked Cassidy and Hook to win this one. We were both wrong. I Even after watching the match, I still think Cassidy and Hook should have won. I think this was one of two matches that could have been on any Dynamite. This wasn't really pay-per-view worthy. Yeah, I felt the guns did well, but they didn't really belong there. The Lucha Brothers didn't do as much work as I thought they were going to do. Cassidy well, and the Young Bucks kind of carried that match. Phoenix also had a bit of an injury also. From oh, he's still carrying carrying over from the Moxley mm. match. Uh, I think he's actually taken out halfway through the match. I believe. Uh, yeah, I remember him kind of disappearing. Yeah, and not really seeing him again. Um, but Penta stepped up and did. Yeah, I was not expecting Young Bucks to win again since they had just faced, uh, done the rubber match with FTR at the last pay per view. And I did like, and I don't remember who it was on commentary, but somebody said, "I'm going to keep a super kick count." Oh, yeah, it was Nigel, match. I think. Was it Nigel? Yeah. Someone was like, oh, I'm going to start counting the super kicks. Yeah, that's because you use it way too freaking much. <laughs> use it less. Um, and we were both wrong on that one. Okay, we next wrong. up, yep. Swerve Strickland went over Adam Hangman Page. This was a... It looked stiff. Yeah. The kicks to the head that Strickland was giving him. Yep. They looked really rough. I don't know how he felt, but Hangman looked like he took a beating. Yeah, this was definitely, this was a much, uh, much beefier match than I expected it would be. I really longer, you mean? Uh, oh, just everything all minutes. around. Yeah, it went over twenty minutes. I was not into this feud at all, and the match. I mean, it didn't really change my mind. I think the feud was kind of meh, but the match was very, very good. Do you think? Let's just take a pause real quick. Do you think? Because I'm looking at these crazy match lengths and a lot of them, especially. You know, when you get towards the end, they like get longer and longer. Mm-hmm. You think Tony Khan just goes for these pay per views? Just run with it, thirty minute time limit. Yeah, I think he's doing like old WCW thinking. You'd put the 
the lower card guys in the beginning with the shorter matches and just keep building, building, building yeah. until the end. Because by the end of the show, I was getting kind of annoyed. Like, yeah. okay, that's enough damn near falls. Like, how many finishers are we going to hit before the Young Bucks are notorious for that and Kenny Omega is? Yeah. Um, I was kind of feeling that more across the board through the rest of this card. So, got yep. me thinking. Uh, next up. Oh, and so on that one, that <laughs> oh, right. was the first one we deviated on. You picked Swerve to win. I picked Paige. And Jer pulls away. I was wrong. Um, all right. Next up was the almost the shortest match, except for the Statlander match of uh, the main card. That was Starks and Wheeler Yuta. And this was the second one I think could have been on Dynamite. Uh, this one definitely could have been on. This one could have been on. Honestly, this one could have been on Rampage. Yeah. There's no heat behind any of these guys. I don't know if they just wanted to see them in a pay-per-view or something. There's no heat. I don't know if they're trying to like make up because Starks has been trying to get yeah, some momentum I, and CM Punk kicked his feet out from underneath right. them. Right. I think it's more for for Starks' benefit. Uh, I did not, and we maybe we can start this conversation now and continue it. Um, I did not need to have Moxley on commentary. This was the match that he came out on commentary yep. for. Yep. And he stayed on for the Danielson one. Yeah. Um, I don't think he added anything. I th- oh, actually, he was out during the Claudio match on at the, the pre-show beginning. Too. Yes, at the yeah. very beginning. Which I thought, okay, it's a pre-show, like, whatever. It's the pre-show, zero hour, whatever. Okay, fine. There were times where he was talking and JR was staying silent because he was talking so much. And there were parts of it I actually enjoyed. He, I didn't think he was terrible. He did get a little a little bit too much at, at points, but I, I just don't think he, he was terrible. It, I just didn't think he was adding much. Um, you know, well, especially after Yudo loses... He keeps talking. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's a learn. You, you learn your lesson. You move. It's like, oh my god, dude. Like, <laughs> if I would have seen you come out, it would have ruined me because I would have been like, oh crap, you just gonna go over now. Mm-hmm. You know, but no, that's not the case. Like they had his fellow Blackpool Combat Club guy come out to do uncom- when he's gonna lose. I don't know. It was yeah, weird. it was weird. It was weird. We both picked Starks on that one, so we were both right on but that. But they managed to recover. Up next, Brian Danielson versus so Zack Sabre Jr. by pinfall. No heap. Man, did they make up for it. Definitely a contender for match of the year, without a doubt. This is, and there was no blood. Mm-hmm. There was no, nothing gimmicky about That's, it. Well, the whole whole story was they're trying to, they're trying to prove who's the best technical wrestler. Yep. And technical wrestling is all groundwork, submission work, stretching, no strikes, no no blood, nothing like that. But then the story is, Danielson won with a knee, not with a submission or anything. So, so is he? This feud will continue. It continues on. But the, yeah, this match was phenomenal. Danielson did go over, which I think uh, you I picked, picked. You picked Danielson. I picked Saber Junior. This was a, this was the other one I think that I had up on you. Yep. Um, it was an excellent match. Twenty two forty five. It was. Close to it was the second longest match of the night, but man, it flew by. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed watching that one. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, I, I think this should that should have been, if not main event, co-main for sure. It's, I would agree with you when you said it's one of the top, one of the matches of the year, top mm-hmm. five for sure. Yep. Uh, all right, up next, Callis family, uh, Takeshita, Osprey, Guevara uh, defeated Jericho and the Golden Elite. That would be Omega and Kota Ibushi. This match dragged for me, as it yep. always does. This did not belong at the back end of the show. I would have happily switched this one with the um, the Young Bucks match earlier in the night. Yeah. And it was twice as long as and the Young Bucks match. I said it when we made the predictions. This feud with Don Callis has gone on for so long. I picked Jericho's team to win because I wanted this to be over. And... Just a few nights later on Dynamite, nope, not gonna happen. Kenny Omega and Jericho were in a tag match against Takeshita, and it was supposed to be Sammy Guevara, but he was out for injury, so it's it was one of the Aussie yeah. Open guys. But it's crowded. I don't, you know, these guys like Will Osprey, guys like Takeshita, uh, Omega, they should be in singles Jericho, matches. Jericho, singles, maybe tag teams, but jamming six guys in the ring like that, everybody's trying to get their moment in the sun. And again, you okay. can't keep that from being 25 minutes long because yeah. everybody needs three minutes to do right. what they need to do. And I said it again last week, Abushi in his first two outings in AEW didn't really shine. Yeah. 
This match didn't really help. He's him. getting buried. Get mm-hmm. him in there one on one a couple of times in a row. Knock the dust off. Put him on a Wednesday night. Yeah. Or or a Saturday night even. No, they won't do it. But that was n- another one we differed at. You picked Osprey's team. I picked Jericho, and I'm losing this some bitch. Uh, next up, FTR. Uh, and uh, went over Aussie Open. No hard pick there. I think we both knew. Yep. Aussie Open's been taking some punishment. Uh, Mark lately. Davis broke his wrist in the match. So it looks like uh, yeah. we're going to get to see a little more Kyle Fletcher in the future. Yep. See what his singles capabilities are. And then the main event of the night, Christian Cage defeats Darby Allen 2-1. to one. I did not realize it was two out of three falls. I oh, got yeah. so confused when he counted him out. And then they kept going. I'm like, did I miss something? Dude, what, what is going wait, on? Wait, wait, wait. You buried the lead there. Counted him out after pi- um, power yes. bombing him on the onto stairs. the corner of the stairs. Yeah. Darby Allen is a madman. From the apron, even. It wasn't just even standing on the floor. He's, he's a madman. He is oh my God. a crazy madman. I don't I, I don't know what kind of career he's going to have in 10 years because that is just madman. No. The stuff that he's doing. That is insane. And of course, to top it all off, uh, well, we did have a heel turn. So, yep. so after the match, uh, Nick Wayne, who's been buddies with Darby Allen, turned on him, hit him with the TNT belt. No real clear reason as to why that would happen. No. Nope. Just did after losing to Lucha. Now all of a sudden he's going to, if he can't beat him, join him, I guess. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. Because Christian Cage is that, uh, yep. that persuasive. Lucha comes out snarling they go to beat him up sting comes out they knock sting down and then the moment of the night i think adam copeland makes his appearance okay one last piece of criticism they did it wrong talking Uh, about the video yes yeah they cut to black this very short what was a 10 15 second long cut and then the music hits Wrong, wrong, wrong. And during he the... raises his chair for the concerto, and the music hits. That's how you do it. Right. You think you know me? Did you see the video though? When the car is driving down the road, painted on the road is rated R. So they uh, knew even before he would. I actually saw his face. Not, I, I knew he was in the car and stuff, and I kind of assumed. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This is probably Edge. Yeah. Just because you could kind of, you like saw his silhouette at one point. You could see the beard and stuff. Um. I kind of knew it was him. They did it wrong. They did it wrong. It, it looked, it I mean, took me out of it is what it did. It was exciting. The crowd popped. It was a good Huge. debut, but it could have been better. Gigantic pop. Yeah. Huge pop. Had his WWE music. Had the, had it all. And they're going with the rated R gimmick, which is the right way to do it, because mm-hmm. that's how you draw a clear bridge. Between exactly. He has Edge that trademark. So. Yep. And he can, he can hold on to that. So. That's so the final good. score, 6 out of 10 correct guesses, and you had 8 out of 10. Oh, so. oh man, that feels good. Mm. That tastes so I, good. Yeah, I'm, I don't deserve the pr- professor moniker anymore. <laughs> We're going to have to come up with a new one. <laughs> What's going to have to be? This was awesome. Full gear is coming up in, in November. November. Yep. We'll have to see. Obviously, that'll be Adam, presumably, that'll be Adam Copeland's first one back. No, that's on... Uh, title Tuesday. He's no, facing no, no. Lucha I mean, his, first, his first pay-per-view. Oh, okay. I mean, it'll be his first premium live event or pay-per-view. Pay-per-view. AEW does pay-per-view. Until next year, right? It's pay-per-view. Yeah. Right? Is it January when the new I think Max so. contract kicks in? So we have that to look forward to. It looks like he's maybe going to be feuding with Christian. So he's going to be obviously against Lucha on Tuesday. Um, and then or tomorrow, I should say. Lucha tomorrow. Luchasaurus, and then obviously that's going to build over the next you know five weeks or so yep. to get us to full gear. So that should be very interesting. It'll be interesting to see. Um, Adam Cole is on his way back. I wonder where that's going to fall in. Is on his way be... back, he's going to be out for a little while. Uh, well, I guess what I mean is I thought that in the next month or so he would he would be back. Not not he's back now. I don't think so. I mean, they, he did a uh, a video promo not promo um a video package on dynamite this past week um so he'll probably still be involved that way but i don't think he's well gonna be it'll back be interesting in the ring to see how soon. they keep because he's defended the tag titles maybe now he's going to actually get forced to defend the world championship oh you're saying mjf i'm talking about mjf yeah i mentioned adam cole because if he's not going to be back okay pronouns pal <laughs> he she 
Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there. We're going to make sure and cover it. Um, full Gear is always one of my favorites of the year. Obviously, a lot of controversy associated with Full Gear. Maybe they can recover from last year's Full Gear drama. What controversy? Anyways, wasn't that the CM Punk? No, it was All Out. Oh, sorry, All Out, my bad. See, there's no controversy. You're making shit up. <laughs> that explains why AEW is doing so poorly. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we enjoyed it. We hope you did. Let us know below what uh, your favorite match of the night was. Are you excited about Adam Copeland? Tell your friends. Edge is back. And he's in AEW. Watch. Wednesday night, Tuesday night, Saturday night, one night. Internet, please involve yourself. AEW needs you. Join the AEW army with us. That being said, you keep watching. We'll keep wrestling with the business.